Welcome to another session of Extended Learning for Simulation Engineers from Applied CAX. In this episode, we are going to discuss SimCenter Flow EFD. We will go through a brief introduction, how it can help your organization, and provide a quick, detailed walkthrough with a simple use case. Flow EFD is a fluid dynamic solver that allows engineers to analyze fluid flow, heat transfer, and other related physical phenomena. Flow EFD enables users to rapidly test design changes, run advanced simulations, and optimize product performance. Its versatility makes it a valuable tool across numerous industries, including the automotive sector, where it supports vehicle aerodynamics and cooling analysis, the electronics industry, where it helps manage thermal performance in electronic components, process engineering, where it optimizes fluid handling and equipment design, and HVAC, where it refines airflow and climate control solutions. Flow EFD stands out for its seamless integration with leading CAD platforms, allowing engineers to perform simulations directly within their familiar design environment and streamline their workflow. There is a standalone version which uses SOLIDWORKS as the background CAD, or engineers can install it as an add-on on the CAD software they are already using. Flow EFD is compatible with most CAD software, like Siemens NX, Creo, Katia V5, Solid Edge, among others. Its front-loading approach enables simulation and optimization early in the design process, reducing costly rework and prototype iterations. The user-friendly interface ensures that even those without extensive CFD experience can quickly navigate and utilize powerful analysis tools. By leveraging fast simulation turnaround through automated meshing and efficient solver technology, Flow EFD helps teams iterate rapidly to refine and validate designs. Finally, its parametric and optimization capabilities allow users to explore a multitude of design variables and scenarios with ease, ensuring that products are thoroughly vetted and optimized before reaching production. Flow EFD provides a comprehensive suite of physics models that enable engineers to tackle a wide variety of real-world scenarios. Its laminar and turbulent flow models incorporate industry standard turbulence formulations like Kappa Epsilon and Kappa Omega, while the ability to handle incompressible as well as compressible flows covers everything from low speed to high speed applications. The software's conjugate heat transfer capabilities integrate conduction, convection and radiation in both fluid and solids. Its rotating reference frame captures accurately the effects of rotating machinery such as pumps and fans. Complex fluids benefit from non-Newtonian flow modeling and specialized features like porous media and cavitation enhance analysis involving filters, membranes or low-pressure phenomena. In addition, multiphase and phase change models account for liquid gas interactions, condensation and evaporation, while dedicated humidity and moisture transport capabilities address critical considerations in HVAC, electronic cooling and other moisture-sensitive environments. In Flow EFD, the interface typically features multiple toolbars arranged across the top of the application window, each grouped by common tasks to guide users through the simulation process. To access it, we just select the Flow Analysis tab. On the left side, we can find the project toolbar, which provides options for creating new projects, opening existing ones, and saving work. Here the user can find the simulation wizard, which simplifies the process of setting up a simulation. Physics and Boundary Conditions toolbar contains tools to assign materials, define fluid subdomain boundaries, and specify thermal properties. Here the user can set up boundary conditions such as inlets, outlets, walls, heat sources, fans, or rotating frames. In the Meshing toolbar, one can find controls for setting mesh parameters such as automatic mesh, manual mesh refinement, or local mesh controls. The Simulation Control toolbar houses solver management commands, including the ability to run, pause, or stop simulations. Finally, the results and post-processing toolbar provides quick access to visualization features such as cut planes, ISO surfaces, flow trajectories, and XY plots. The Flow EFD tree is a central organizational element in the user interface that arranges all simulation-related data into a structured hierarchical view. Typically, it is docked on the side of the application window. At the root level, you'll often see a top-level node representing the overall Flow EFD project. Below that, the tree expands into collapsible sections dedicated to specific simulation tasks. 
For example, one branch might be for setting up the computational domain where users can configure the size, location and its boundary conditions. Another branch covers physics and boundary conditions where the user can assign material properties, boundary conditions and physics models like fans, heat pipes or printed circuit boards. A separate branch handles calls which define the output parameters that the solver tracks during iteration. The mesh section provides a visual reference for mesh settings or local mesh refinements. In the end, one can find the results branch where the solution is saved and the user can create post-processing plots, cut planes and flow trajectories. Each node in the flow FD tree can be expanded or collapsed to reveal more detailed settings and right-clicking a node typically brings up context-sensitive menus for adding or editing items in place. Let's try to set up together part of an example from the tutorials collection of FlowFD. This tutorial demonstrates the capabilities of FlowFD to simulate cooling of electronic components in an embedded industrial computer by using various features implemented in the electronics module. Here we consider a single board computer with a case which contains, among other components, CPU, heat sink with two heat pipes, expansion board, sodium slot with memory installed and peripheral connectors. Air at room temperature enters the case through the vents located at the side and bottom panels and exits through the vents located at the back panel, where an exhaust fan is installed. The resulting flow inside the case removes the heat produced by electronic components. The heat pipes also transfer the heat produced by CPU and north bridge to the heat sink which dissipates it into the air. In the considered model, the heatsink is placed near the exhaust fan. The objective of the simulation is to ensure that under these conditions, electronic components operate at moderate temperatures. To set up the simulation, we have to create a project and configure the simulation. We use the wizard which simplifies the procedure. We name the project electronic components and we select the units that we want to use in this simulation. After that, we select fluid flow, conduction and gravity as physics models and select internal flow as analysis type. This tells FlowEFD that we want to simulate the flow in the interior of the PC case as the PC case is the largest part of the assembly. Then, we select air as the default fluid and mild steel as the default solid. Since we are simulating only the interior of the case, we need to specify the heat transfer coefficient in the walls of the case. Finally, we leave the default values as initial conditions. After finishing, a project is created and we can see it in the project tree. We first check the computational domain. Since we are simulating an internal flow, we just want to make sure that the computational domain contains all the parts we want to be included. Right-click on it, edit definition and we can see that FlowEFD automatically recognized that it should create a box surrounding the whole assembly. Next, we will define, for illustration purposes, the inlet, outlet and the heat pipe. The simulation contains more components like printed circuit boards and two resistant components, but to make this video short, we will not show them here. To set up the inlet, we go to boundary conditions, right-click, insert boundary conditions. We select the inner surface of all the leads that FlowEFD automatically generated in the vent openings. To select the inner faces, we use the tools to split the parts to surfaces and then we sort the surfaces that lie in the computational domain. Finally, we select environment pressure and click OK. For the outlet, we will specify an external outlet fan boundary and we will use a predefined fan model that exists in the engineering library. We go to the horizontal toolbar, we expand conditions and we select fan. Again, we select the inner face of the lid that FlowEFD automatically created in the opening of the fan and we select the fan from the library. To set up the heat pipe, we go to sources, expand and select heat pipe. We have to select the whole component and the surfaces that touch the chip and the heat sink. To make our life easier and be able to select these surfaces, we hide the heat sink and the chip. Last, we specify the effective thermal resistance to 0.3 kelvins per watt. Scrolling down the project tree, we can see all the additional elements that this project includes, like material assignments, two resistor components and printed circuit boards. In the end of the project tree, we can see the mesh node where the user can set up the mesh. We right-click on the global mesh, 
Edit Definition and the Mesh Settings pop-up appears on the screen. There we click on Show Basic Mesh which shows the mesh size projected on the parts. We select Level 6 on the Automatic Mesh and that's all the user needs to define. The Local Mesh refers to the heatsink and we just increase the level to 1 in the Small Solid Feature Refinement level to capture the fins of the heatsink. Now we are ready to mesh and run our simulation. To mesh and run the simulation, we just press Run on the horizontal toolbar. On the pop-up we see that both mesh and run is selected. We choose how many cores we want to use and check the load results in the end. Finally we press Run. A pop-up window appears that shows information while the solver is running. First the domain is being meshed and then the solver starts iterating. We can see the evolution of variables that we choose to measure, what in the flow EFD language is called goals, and see how they converge to an asymptote till the solver finishes iterating. After finishing, we go back to the project tree and we see that the results are loaded. We expand the node where the user can post-process the results. For demonstration purposes, we show some flow trajectories colored by temperature and some temperature plots on the surface of the chips and the heatsink. FlowEFD is a powerful CFD solver that is extremely well suited even for inexperienced CFD users. It is extremely easy to use as it is integrated on the CAD software that designers already use, eliminating the need of switching between software and shortening the learning curve. Through its smart cell mesh technology and immersed boundary conditions, there is no need for extended and convoluted mesh settings. The process is automated without detailed user input. Meshing can be a long and complex process, but FlowEFD makes it a process of a couple of clicks. This convenience does not come at the cost of limited capabilities as FlowEFD is capable of simulating a broad range of physics with the accuracy of the Reynolds average Navier-Stokes models. Last, FlowEFD enables the users to create endless what-if scenarios and design optimizations in the same project, very fast and with limited settings. This makes it an invaluable tool in the hands of designers that want to test or optimize their designs fast and accurately in every phase of the design process.